Shalom, this is Rabbi Roger coming to you from Israel. This is part two of our interview with Sergeant Major Chaim Malspin. He explains some of the frustration and problems that he is having, which does not necessarily make his job easy. On the other side, he knows there is a real concern for ministry help. Now, let us pick back up where we left off in part one. You can check if you want that even, I mean, this is a controversial point. You might not want to put this in or, or yes or no. The reach of the missiles, let's say we completed the invasion of, of southern Lebanon. We made them retreat from their uh, what's called Shmuel Teva, which are nature reserves. Nature reserves, but they're not nature reserves. We're talking about MLRS, multi layered rocket systems underground that the Hezbollah have. And of course, a vast, vast tunnel network. I don't know if you've seen any videos of it. If you follow my daily videos, you'll see inside uh, the tunnels of the Hezbollah. That's how, and of course, the Hamas too, but you'll see inside the tunnels of the, the Hezbollah. It's different, they're wider, they're better, their comms are better, everything's better than the Hamas. And uh, so even if they left the tunnels and left the uh, nature reserves, quote unquote, nature reserves, which is really an MLRS rocket system, uh, and they left it, they went back to the Litani River. Is that really enough? It's really not enough because even if they're, what is it, almost 40 kilometers back, it doesn't mean they can't hit everybody still. They, they still have, uh, are we going to now go, what? I, I'm talking just what do the people want us to do? Do they want us to occupy fully southern Lebanon like we did back in the day? Um, do they to build cities there? Do they want us to, will that make them feel safe? Because it says, we want to make sure that people feel safe. That sounds nice. But what do you mean by that? I like to unpack that a little bit to know what makes them happy. Of course, we're doing everything we can, but everything you can, let's unpack that. Okay. Do you want us to occupy southern Lebanon? Do you want us to uh, just move to behind the Litani? They still have missiles. Do you want us to topple, topple Hezbollah entirely? We've seen how hard that is in with Hamas. Do you know that that means another seven, ten months, another year of war w with what money? Uh, are you saying it was with what international pressure would, would hit us then? So I'm just, I'm just, I'm not trying to sound like a pessimist. I'm quite an optimist, but I want people to know what they're asking me to do and, uh, <laughs> and what that would take. And the whole economy is already, as I just aforementioned. So, yeah, yeah hmm. you get the point. Right. Sad part is there's so many little tentacles that are attached to it, you know, and none of them are, you know, not necessarily any one better than the other or a big help in the overall picture. And that right. Was, Indeed. So what, you know, if you know, what is the government actually going to do about it? You know, is there anything long term that they're thinking or are they just saying, you know, as a bandage, we're just going to put these people aside and just kind of ignore them and let them flail and do whatever they need to do to survive. And in the meantime, we got a war to tend to. Uh, multiple wars. Yeah, well, that is exactly what it is, is a band-aid. Well, until either very wide military um, action is taken, which we're ready for. We have the Yahalom forward base. We have tanks. We have everything set up for Lebanon. And, of course, for finishing the job, if the international community will just let us work and not delay us so much that it's already dragged on so much because of these delays, uh, we could have finished this by now. If we, instead of releasing soldiers and release most of the soldiers, I'll get them back. It's actually quite. Um, yeah, if America not a good hadn't way gotten involved it. either, you know, and slowed us down. That's right. If you just go yeah. in and do it quickly and con qu they saw, they say, I was, I remember there was this uh, quick and decisive victory. Those words. So what Israel's decided to do for uh, reasons that are aforementioned and others. The exact opposite of quick and decisive victory. You just find this, find what is the exact opposite of quick and decisive victory? That's what we've engaged in. Slow and not undecisive, not victory. Well, so here, so yeah, so until we figure out that whole scenario, there is the need to put a band aid on it just so they don't uh, riot in the streets to put a band aid on these evacuees and, and let charities um, step up. And, and whereas there's not always governments just shelling out money like it's America when we got off the gold standard and uh, and printing money. And uh, we'll see, and so charities really are invaluable in that in this time more than ever to to help. I would say this for sure is that um, there isn't any straight answer. I know that Americans. Or, or Jewish people from America, such as yourself and myself, we like 
We like straight answers. There's no straight answer regarding what must be done so that the people can return to the South or people can return to the North. Uh, everyone's going to have a different answer. Some people, one person said, to, for me to return to my house in the South, I need to see nothing but um, uh, wheat fields from in the entire Gaza. That's, or, or you know, nothing but uh, crops in the entire Gaza. I'll go back to my house. For other people say, no, if you, if you significantly enough defeat the Hamas, uh, you, 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 uh, they get a beat down significantly enough, that's enough. I will then return to my home. For the same for the North. What does it mean uh, if the Hezbollah is, is bombed from the air? Is that really going to do it? If, they are, if we invade southern Lebanon and, and, and then leave again, is that going to do it? Or is it just a waste of resources and times and human life? These are questions. I think that I always in these interviews, I like to go back to the word of God. There's been a judgment in the past on Tyre and Sidon for the way that they hurt Israel. Great judgment that God brought on Tyre and Sidon. And then there was a great blessing brought on, on Tyre and Sidon when King Hiram blessed Israel. And you saw he had that gold tower and silver tower and so much uh, shipping and international trade that they became a huge uh, monolith, a huge empire. The, uh, and the Phoenicians, whole Phoenician empire was giant. Uh, but then you have the Jezebel. She's a Phoenician, so she decided to uh, try to in, to to um, to change Israel through her idolatry. And we see how that we just the, the proof is in the pudding. We can go back to instance after instance, bring up reference after reference, and showcase exactly what happened and what's going to happen today too. Throughout history, it's always been as you know, a good king versus an evil king. You know, leaders that bases what the outcome is going to be. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And the same thing in, in the South, same thing, same thing everywhere. Oh, and, yeah. and this is true too, is there, there's always an ability to like adopt a family, adopt an evacuee family or to, now I know there's language barriers. That's a big issue. Language mm -hmm. barriers. Mm -hmm. People write, I have my car has right now in it, right now, hundreds of uh, handwritten notes that people have sent and, and to give to the people. And I've given them out, and some people are really blessed, but uh, some of them are, for example, written e in cursive. Even if someone sort of knows English, no one can read cursive. I'm just, just uh, touching on a little specific thing. But people will write those handwritten notes, and that's, that's really good. But in the end, in the end of the day, the most, the biggest blessing really is, one, praying, and, and number two, standing with trusted believers who have proven themselves and such as charities and investing in them uh, in a way that will not only bring a smile to a face, but will show the love of God in action in the midst of a war. So that's something that I've seen to be uh, a real thing. So There's if people, people wanted trusted. to help out, where would they go? Yeah. What would they do? They, they could come and volunteer. For sure. And you can come right now, too. There's groups that come right now. I know there's a, uh, there's a misperception that, oh, I can't go to Israel because, uh, you know, I can't go there because United Airlines isn't flying there. Well, El Al is flying here, and so are other airlines now again. Life has to go on. Here's, I'll give you this example. I'll give one example. I was there at, you know, around October 7th time, around that time, and I saw, you know, where, where the grass was all burnt, where the trees were, were burnt, where there was cars upside down burnt, and, and death and destruction, bodies on the floor, uh, bodies of terrorists, terrorists at large. That, you know, it was a very, very bad time. Everyone, everywhere was, was sirens, flashing lights, smell of death, strong smell of death. The Re'im um, place. I go back now and I see trees have been planted. I see there's memorials for, for those who've fallen and, you know, signs have been put up. There's people coming to, to pay, to honor the memory of those who've, who've been butchered at the, the hands of medieval style, uh, barbaric, zombie apocalypse-esque, you know, Nazi terrorism. So extremist, radical terrorism. So what I'd say is that it shows that life goes on. Trees growing and it looks all on flowers shows a sign that, you know what, in the end of it all, life never didn't, can't totally stop. And part of being part of the continuum of life is to come and volunteer for, for yourself, cook some food for some, some uh, soldiers, for some uh, families, maybe play a game with kids. Again, the parents are usually trying to go out and figure things out, and the kids are stuck in whatever place they are, and they could, they'd love to try to play some games or, or do something uh, of, that, of that type.
And uh, of course, donate. Hey, go pray for them. Hundred percent. Donate. They could. They could easily say, "Look, we want to work with a trusted charity." There's a, there are charities in Israel that haven't had the time honored uh, trust to see if they. You don't know. If people want to help, and they're like, "Oh, I'll just do this. I'll just give something somewhere." Well, I would go with those who have a track record instead of just, "Oh, I decided to give this one family directly thousand dollars." They're like, "Well, what about the other families that are right next to them?" That's that's kind of you know, it's it's not an not a way to address a group of people. So volunteer and pray and come and uh, and and give in this time, especially in light of the aforementioned expenditures. So then I would just say it, it's not it. We don't have to go right into where the missiles are either. I did mention that sometimes people go to like right on the border and are giving food to soldiers and stuff. But there's plenty of people who have left that area and they're here, like in Tiberius area, where or in in areas like that being uh, targeted right in right in Tiberius. So it does happen, but primarily it's a quieter, more um, uh, just like you'd think of Central Park or whatever, quiet place, and you get to just play with the kids and, and stuff. So I would take fear out of the equation is what I'm saying. Well, one thing I've noticed, you know, life just goes on. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter what happens, you know, how it happens. Yeah, it upsets the apple cart, but you can always pick the apples back up, put them in the cart and keep on going. And that's that's what I've noticed. Yeah, that, uh, I did have um, I did have a a little conversation, and you'll see why I'm bringing this up, with one of the Yahalom uh, warriors heroes, and he was uh, very troubled. And uh, you know, a few of them have go through these times where memories, where they're there in that memory of trauma. They're there at that moment. For example, one of them, I see, closed his eyes, and I can see he's kind of shaking. Like, what's what are you seeing? And he said, Ah, oh, well. It was October 7th, and there I am, and, and uh, thing, everything's on fire, smoke everywhere, missiles falling everywhere, and this lady is alive, screaming, and she has no face. She's burnt, oh, but no face is, exists anymore, and then she falls over dead just before I could even really do anything and, and stuff. So, that, so there's some real trauma. Okay, then I talked to another friend, and he said, you know, uh, it, what's going on? I, I go home on a break, and everyone's talking about, the next um, uh, television star or the next singer who's going to be winning the next award. And I said, what's going on? Like, they don't, they don't seem to get that we've lost friends, that we are risking our life every day. And same for evacuee families that we're out. They're living their life, but we're, we're, we have no home anymore. Our life is completely gone. And everything we've built for all our life, completely gone, our, ho- our home and may be destroyed. And will I ever get it back? And so on and so forth. So I had this conversation. I said, I said, look, what do you want people to do? You want everyone to go into mourning? You want to close down every coffee shop? You want to, uh, you want the country to go dark? Uh, is that is that what you're fighting for so hard? Uh, is that what we're all fighting for? That the country goes dark and goes into mourning as a nation? Uh, no, there's times to mourn, but life must go on, and we want life to go on. And uh, and he's like, you know what? You're absolutely right. You're fighting that life will continue, not that life will just just grind to a halt. And, uh, and so anyway, that's I thought that, and he was like, you're absolutely right. Let me ask you, the listener, a question. How are you dealing with life's daily struggles? Do you have trauma in your life and are unable to deal with it? Maybe some of you were in Vietnam or the Iraqi war and have had some issues that causes you not to sleep well at night, just like the soldier who closes his eyes and sees October 7th all over again. Reach out and contact us. We want to help you to overcome the hurt, the pain, the unforgiveness that you are struggling with. Jesus wants to heal you and set you free. Reach out to us and let us help you. Go to branchofisrael.com and contact us today so we can see you get real freedom in your life. And just know anything shared with us remains totally confidential. How about the person that does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior? The Bible does not give us a prayer to receive him, but it tells us to believe on his name and you shall be saved. So repeat this prayer after me. Jesus, forgive me of all unforgiven sins in my life. Forgive me for not following you. Forgive me for not giving you any hurts and pain I have struggled with. I believe you are the one true Messiah, and I want you to be in the center of my life with me. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, this is Rabbi Roger, and thank you so much for listening. Lahitra, goodbye, or see you again.